Welcome to PTG TV. This is your host, Antonio Hicks. So I had the pleasure of being on Karen and Kat's podcast, where we talked about Kamala Harris and Eliza's being told and been putting some truth behind her name in itself. And then my apology video that I made. If you hadn't seen it, I actually posted it on my channel. It was a little uh, short that I made to apologize for the wrong that I made in uh, mischaracterizing her during her first campaign run. So check out this episode. Y'all sit back with last grab a snack. And y'all tune in. Let me know. And you know how you feel about it. how you feel about the race. I mean, everybody's excited behind it. I think she's going to win. But anyway, y'all gotta give me them air horns. <laughs> this week, yes, man. Like a week ago, did we think we would be here with Kamala Harris with a war chest of over a hundred million dollars? No, no. And you not know, at all. Not at all. And mm -hmm. I have to say that, like, when she ran in 2020, she wasn't my my top choice. I liked um, Duval Patrick. He couldn't get any any airplay. But mm -hmm. here we are, and her candidacy is like fire. Like I'm feeling like Barack Obama 2008. Yeah. And then, so I have signed up in full disclosure. I have signed up for everything. Like I'm canvassing. I'm going to, um, you know, I'm going to knock doors. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, be in um, online groups. I'm going, I'm doing it. Like I'm, I'm, I'm doing it because I'm going to be all in for her because I'm committed to getting her um, elected because I believe that this is her time. I feel like this is the right person for this right time. But there's been a, a lot of what I see online from our folks has been so disheartening. <laughs> um, but I think people are coming around. So I want to go ahead. Yeah. No, I, 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 we're going to dive right into it. Go ahead and play that clip. <laughs> so, all right, I'm going to play this Lay it clip. Up. Lay it up. <laughs> Let me share my screen. That's the right one. Antonio Hicks is not a stranger to conversations with Karen. He is Karen. not. We are family. Okay. All right, give a backstory with, about what you're about to play. Did the, the black folks come from in Jamaica? What did they just like Thanos snap and they was just all of a sudden <laughs> just there? And I'm like, even at the end of the day, too, though, they're black. And I'm not telling y'all to vote for nobody just because they're black. I don't do this. Was that I don't do that in my own state because we got some crooked black folks around here too that just be ignorant as hell in the community community that's predominantly black district and you county. But um, and I'm you not even stop it and restart it. I am saying huh? though, I mean you can stop it in the and kind of restart it, like hit the X in the top right corner. Mm -hmm. We live, family. This will I know, I know. Was this it right here? Uh, so I don't typically. I don't talk about the, the, the Republican party that much. Nope. Why, nope. Why, why do I need to win? Goodness. Okay, you know I had it up, right? Yeah, it is. It is. is it the one way? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Go back, go back up. Yeah. Her dad is making that one right there. But go back, go back down. To the right, to the right. <laughs> down, yeah. So I am one that's not afraid to admit okay. my own ignorance. And typically when I'm I'm dealing with somebody, y'all y'all know I'm, I always say to myself, I'm a data whore. And I wasn't hoarding enough on this one. So my largest beef I had with Kamala, outside of being I'm a progressive and she's almost like more, more so like a moderate. But my biggest beef was what I heard and what I saw online as far as her prosecuting so many black men. And when I tell you that when I saw the actual data, data, well, you know what? Somebody made a video on it and I'm because they made a video on it. I'm not going to go back and redo the video. So I'm going to play the video. We're just going to look at the video together. And, um, I, this dude cleared it up for me and I saw the numbers on there because to me even when I saw the numbers I don't care if it's 500 I don't care if it's 200 to me those in my opinion those 200 families 500 families that's been disrupted they could have had different futures or different outcomes that uh, they didn't get an opportunity to do so with because they were locked up but I stand corrected I'm ignorant and in most cases if you put yourself in a situation like that you kind of pretty much kind of like I teach my boys you got to accept the consequences of your actions when you do stuff like that so Y'all check this out, and then we'll talk about it afterwards. We're the victim of misinformation in our community. Kamala Harris, for years, I've been told, hey, 
she put thousands of black men in jail unjustly for marijuana charges. And I was like, dang, that's crazy. So for years, I didn't like her because of that. Then last night, because I was bored, I sat down and I said, well, how many thousands? 10, 20, 30,000 dudes? So from 2004 to 2010, Kamala Harris was the district attorney for San Francisco. And in that time, she had several convictions for marijuana charges. Her total amount was 1,956 people. And you might say to yourself, that's not thousands. I know. Because even less actually went to jail. The number was 45. So for years, we've been told, hey, she's locking up black men left and right unjustly for weed charges. When in fact, not really. Now, I will say, in 2010, when the bill came up for the legalized weed, she sat on the sidelines. 2016, she did the same. She didn't come forward and speak publicly about it until 2018. So just to give you a little fact checking, Kamala Harris isn't responsible for locking up thousands of black men for weed. I don't even know where that came from. And I tell you right now, honestly, it came from the internet. So because they really don't have any, the other side don't have anything to run with, now they resort to doing now the Obama thing. So even in my my ignorance, let me first off say, I apologize for spreading this rumor too. I saw it somewhere and I went and researched it, but I didn't go into any deep dive and deep dive in it because I just saw that number. And I just let it go at that. And I stand corrected on that to only know 45 got convicted out of what he said, the 1600 or 1900. So I, I apologize for that. And I think the other side of the right knows that. So because they know that the actual information is getting out now, they're not they pulling the Obama thing, talking about she ain't African-American because <laughs> her dad is Jamaican. I'm like, bro, bro. Yeah, you can stop it. Right. Yeah, man. No. So what made, you, what made you go down that road, brother? Yeah. I'm glad. Uh, I want to first say thank you. Thank you for stepping up saying I messed up. I should have dug a little deeper, a deep dive. But what made you come across that and, and bring that to light? I mean, I and, think. And, and thank you for sharing that because I had heard those numbers too. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't done the deep dive. So thank you. Okay. Well, I mean, I think that we are, I mean, all of us are communities, all of us are previous candidates. And I think the the biggest thing that we're responsible for as community leaders is getting out correct information. And if we make mistakes, coming back and correcting ourselves and those mistakes that we made. And once I saw that, I actually, I dug into it some more and I actually looked at the whole, about the whole Willie Brown thing too. And I, mm. I felt the need to come back to correct that because I mean, just like a cancer, I don't care if you only have a small group of people, I don't care if it's five or 10, it just take one to spread it and it'll continuously go around. So I know with my community, because I mean, I've got what, 7,000 people following me on TikTok. I had to come mm -hmm. back and just correct all of my information and make sure that the community did the same thing too, because yeah. it's wrong. Now, was she my number one candidate? Like what um, Karen was saying early on? No, I was, I'm a Bernie bro. Right. I'm a Bernie. I was Bernie bro early on. I still am Bernie old as hell, so he can sit down now. But uh, <laughs> is you, you know, I had to come back and... Biden was going to have Bernie. I mean, really. Yeah, and I'm and I and I stand behind what I say. Like in my recent thing, I posted that I'm a protector of my community, and especially a protector of my sisters. And as long as you're not a Candace Owen, as long as you ain't no Amoroso or no Tim Scott or or Ben Carson, these people like that, that's always tearing yeah. us down. I'm gonna rep right. you all day, every day, and if I make a mistake, I'm gonna come back and correct myself. So I felt like I had my due diligence to come back there and kind of stand on her a little bit and put out the correct information. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I'm glad that you did that. And I love the fact um, you sat up there and said, we all need to get active and do something. Yeah. Get active and stay active. We're yeah. not. You know, you talk more about people that's in the federal level, and you don't even know the people that who are impacting you right now. No, oh, you know we've been saying this. Who, been who's saying your this. mayor? Who's your city council? Who's your school board? Who's your superintendent? Who's your um, commissioners and all that stuff? Who's your state and local reps, you know, from House to Senate? No one knows that. And we get so by, don't get me wrong, this race is important. And like my sister said, I am just like, I got so many butterflies. And it's just amazing how when, respectfully, our president said, I'm going to pass the torch, we honor him for doing that. But as soon as that went down, I was with my family and my family was like, Ma, I said, what? And it was just like a flush of blood and just excitement just went all over me like, okay. And then to know that the energy around this mm -hmm. right now, 
I wish people could have that energy every election. Every election, every candidate, right? Right. But it really feels very Obama 2008. And what what really energized me was that because that Sunday I'd gotten a, I'd gotten the the text from a sorority sister from my soror mm-hmm. um, in a group text saying join us on this call and then I tried to join the call at eight o'clock it was already full mm-hmm. and so I I you know couldn't log in and then I found out later that they had opened it up but by that time I you know I wasn't paying attention and so. Later, I find out that there was 44,000 black women who raised a million and a half dollars. And then the brothers followed it up with raising over a million and a half. And then white women on Thursday, and the number's still rising, Mm -hmm. they raised $2 million. and And I think I posted this about the fact that she has shattered um uh, the fundraising numbers. She raised a hundred million dollars in mm-hmm. twenty four hours, eighty eight million in twenty four hours, somewhere around there. Um, so she's it's in her ground game. Within that first weekend, within that weekend, she had over a hundred thousand volunteers. So let me let me ask you this: Which one of y'all know the answer to this? Um, with Biden, the money that Biden received, I read somewhere, I think on um, Ballotopia, that the other side was going to make a complaint or sue or somewhat regarding him being able to put... Because the folks who were in the room were not mm-hmm. considering Kamala, and they didn't want her, and they underestimated mm. how much it would resonate with people. I think that's really the gag is that they really didn't think that folks would be so energized by her campaign. I don't know <laughs> if that was it. I think it was based on actual polling numbers. Because, okay. I mean, if you look at some... She, she wasn't polling well because, I mean, she really didn't do much. As, she really hasn't done, and I have to put it honestly, she hadn't really done much as a VP. Okay. So that's what they were. She hasn't done much, or the role that she was playing did not um, lend itself to be on the news cycle. Well, well, first of all, nobody's gonna pay attention to her. I mean, it's, it's about as much as they didn't really pay attention to Hillary either when Hillary. Yeah. So it's, I mean, but even though she was Secretary of State, so I mean, is yeah. the role of the VP is just one of those sitting positions in case something happens to the president. Now, could she have come out to the forefront and then, you know, been an advocate for a ton of issues? Absolutely. But it, to me, at the but end of the day... You, but how do, but you, wait, do no, but how do you do that without stepping over your commander-in-chief? Well, what? she was actually going to a lot of um, international meetings to strengthen our relationship. Yeah. So mm-hmm. as vice president, she was... And y'all fact check me. Y'all got the computers in front of y'all. But I believe in her role as a vice president, she visited the most international diplomats to try to strengthen our relationship as a vice president. Yeah. So she is doing that role. And I think that with her candidacy, with her selection for VP, she's going to need somebody that can strengthen her area of weakness. Mm-hmm. And she was in and out of states going to meet the community leaders and stuff. So kind of me. Like people were joking around because she was in Georgia a lot, and it was like she must have her side dude here in Georgia because she was always in and out of the state. She got a what? <laughs> a side piece in Georgia. But I'm like, Georgia is a battleground state, so it would only Absolutely. make sense for her to be yep. here to ensure that at that time it was her and Biden that was on the ticket. Mm-hmm. Now, am I glad Biden stepped down? Yeah, absolutely I'm glad Biden stepped down. I, I was <laughs> brave about that. I- as much as 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 much as I'm fangirling about Kamala and as a, as excited, someone said she was traveling. She was traveling. She wasn't coming to her side piece. She was traveling. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. But you know, as as excited as I am about her campaign, I and her. I really am. I am a little salty about how they did Joe Biden. This man has been in public service for over 50 years and he's a good man. Why are you shaking your head at me, sir? 
No, I, yeah. So my thing. You don't it, think we did him wrong? No, nah, no. My thing with career politicians is unless you actually. I mean, he did some some stuff for the community, but my beef with him still stands as it is with that ninety four crime bill and some of the stuff after that because. Like just like Jamal True Love is looking for an apology from Kamala and her um, her office when she was the Attorney General in California, San Francisco, and I think he's deserving of that. I'm looking for the same thing when it comes to Biden and even from the Congressional Black Caucus when they approved that crime bill that was pushed down to the states and they lawfully unlawfully targeted a ton of black people. So you could apologize for it, but what did you do to come back and correct yourself and even get some of those uh, charges against those people dropped and removed from their records? Absolutely. I agree with you. Those career politicians, it's time, it's time out for all of that. Just yes. simply because you, you, in my opinion, if you follow the policy and so two things, don't let me forget my thought. I love how you said we all make mistakes. We're not, there is no perfect candidate. No, it's not a perfect I believe candidate. you said that on one I, of your posts. I did. Huh? No, I said, I, I, you're right. I did. Right. Right. And so, no, 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 they all make, we all make mistakes. Mm -hmm. So we should not be defined by our mistakes. It's how okay. we overcome them and make ourselves better. Right. And so to your point, when they don't, when we allow people to stay in office for 40 years, my whole lifetime, you know, these people have been in office and they haven't right. How do I do it? They haven't corrected their wrong. Let me say, say mm -hmm. in my right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so if you're not, and then if you're not open to, the fresh blood, the AOCs and everybody else that's coming in that's younger, that's actually in the street, riding trains, the working community, then how are you going to be able to change? They, the way they're coming into Congress with all these fresh new ideas and you have to earn your way. It's just like with the state of Georgia. Mm -hmm. You get mm -hmm. elected, you have to earn your way to get on those committees. You don't just automatically jump on those committees and you really don't have any say until maybe your third term, Right. you know? So we need to, I don't, my point with that is it's time. Mm, I love my, my, my season. I'm sorry, We love them, but some, some people but, need to transition. Well, some people, is, if you're not, if you're not evolving and keeping up with what's going on and, and not thinking about the past, because like this, that's my question. Are we fighting for democracy? Is, yeah. this, is this the election of democracy or is it truly a, a, an election where people are trying to hold on to old ways that that was viable in that time? Right. But do we really want to go back to women are considered useless if we don't have children? Well, that's I mean, that's part of the democracy, right? So, I mean, you, when you're talking about fighting for democracy, you're fight, talking about fighting for the rights of people as they are of today, not of the ones of the past. So Correct. it's not, not looking at women as tools, not looking at women as the only reason they got to Object. higher position because they slept their way up to the top. Mm. And definitely not right. walking around calling people because they're part of a group of people colored. Right. Okay. That's right. a whole new conversation. Right. <laughs> so, and then, <laughs> and, and then the other thing, too, like... I will say when it comes to Biden, I'm not a fan of Biden. I never have been a fan of Biden, but I will go to bat for him too with some of these senators that's in the same age bracket as him was saying it may be time to step down. I'm like, maybe it's time for you to sit your behind down too. Right. Cause I was that's like, that's kind of like the pot calling kettle black. You can't be on TV and you looking like Skeletor and you saying, well, maybe, you know, he wasn't resonating with the people. I'm like, neither are you. I'm like, you yeah. two steps away from breaking your hip and then you sitting down for good. You need to go ahead and just pass the torch on to somebody younger. And then people think when I say younger, I'm thinking about 30 and below. I'm like, no, I'm 46. Yeah. No, I'm talking about you got to be at least 65. But, yeah. Because the, like, even the other alternative, like I made a video about that, the alternatives, all the alternatives are 70 plus. So True. I'm like, no, it's, 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 I heard a sermon on Sunday mm -hmm. from Stephen Furtick. And his sermon said it's not now. So when you was told no, it wasn't no at all then. It just was no at that time and it's not now. Right now is her time. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it is. So Dreadlock Diva in the comments says, I was an adult during the drug crisis. I remember the feeling of helplessness we had. The black neighborhoods were looking for help. The politicians responded. It's easy to say now that it was bad. And, you know, in my in my neighborhood, I remember mm -hmm. like the apartments behind, behind us. Mm -hmm. We lived in a house, but there were some apartments um, across the field that were behind us. They mm -hmm. were hot. You hear me? Mm -hmm. They smelled 
back on the Ave, down the street, there was a park from my mother's house that I wasn't allowed to go to from like fifth grade on because crack came, um, crack came out Mm -hmm. and it devastated our community. There were so many people who were, you know, like in their late teens, early twenties and thirties, there were people who had been married and and had houses and whatever got hooked on crack. And it did, it devastated our Mm -hmm. community. And, and, and Dread Like Diva is right. There were community, our communities who said, we got to do, we got to do something. We got to do something. That's lock right. them up, lock them up. We cried, lock them up, lock them up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, I can agree with that to a degree, but I just don't want you to, to target, especially with the whole stop and frisk thing. I don't want you just primarily targeting us. And then we have to look and at I, how some, and I ain't even just going to get into the conspiracy theory, but how some of the drugs were even pumped into our community. Now, am I, am I an advocate for, you know, we shouldn't be stopping people with, uh, you know, committing crimes? Absolutely not. Because, I mean, we as, I'm going to say it right now, we as black people, we, I mean, we don't get, we don't get a catch, we can't catch a break from anybody. We can't catch a break yeah. from our own people. We can't catch a break from, from what, when it comes to white people and how they perceive us sometimes. And we definitely can't catch a break from police when they walking in our house and, and, and shooting us down for having some a boiling hot water. So it's like we can't catch a break across the board. We always have to be leery of who we're around, what we're doing, and how we're presenting ourselves. So I do think mm. that they can be – you can be tough on crime, but you don't have to be that tough to where you, you're beating innocent people down and locking us up just so you can say that you got somebody locked up so you can stand clear off your books. Mm. Black girls yeah. getting their shift together says facts. We can't catch a break. So let me ask you this. Do you, do you think that – um with Kamala being a prosecutor, I had a, you know, I dabbled in being in prosecution, working in the DA's office for a brief stint. Yeah, you popo. Um, and so, you said I'm popo. popo. <laughs> I actually had a badge. I did have a badge. Um, do you think that for a segment of the black community, that's a negative for her? The fact that she was law enforcement, because she's she's the top. She was the top cop in the state. Right. Uh, no. Okay. Because even at the end of the day, no matter how far, how much we don't trust police officers or people in their Mm -hmm. position, we still know they're of use to us. We still need them. So just because she's, uh, I mean, because we have a a DA here, that's cool. I mean, people not might necessarily, you know, like how she does stuff, but I mean, I haven't seen her do anything wrong. (laughs) So it's like, I can't. I, I'm I'm cautious when it comes to law enforcement, but my uncle himself, he was a, a police officer and he was an FBI agent. Mm. And so it's like, I know people in my own family that served and they were good people. My cousin, he was a sheriff down in Macon and Macon and whew, crime in Macon is terrible. I've but he's a good dude. Little video of Macon. Yeah, that Macon is hot. Yeah, that Macon is hot. They, they had some, they had uh, drug issues down there. My sister um, is a retired sheriff's deputy. Shout out to Broward County. All right. Ooh, yeah, where you found it? Where you sound at? Let's get some <laughs> effects. <laughs> yeah, she did. She did 25, 26 years and she retired. She's like, peace. I'm out. Yeah. Um, but she, yeah. you know, she started, she was seeing, you know, the changes in the population of the people who were getting arrested, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and, and seeing younger and younger people coming through a lot of people with mental health issues mm-hmm. and it would, it made the job that much harder. So I, and I, I asked that question about Kamala because um, Kamala, sorry about Kam- Kamala, because I've seen people online, black folk talking mm-hmm. about the fact that she was the popo. So who do you vote for? Oh, you just sit down and you just vote and you just give it over to that clown? I, I don't I don't know because I'm I'm voting for Kamala. Trina Palmer says Broward County in the house. I think that might be my homegirl from um, <laughs> from my from from uh, College of High School. Um, so here's the thing but, I don't like when we do, I don't like the fear mongering that happens when it comes to us in our community. Like they always we're always in a state of fear, so we're we're pressured always to go for a candidate. This time, if I'm looking at her, I don't feel like the pressure is there. And the reason I'm really going to support is because I want to piss some people off. Oh, I can't with you. I, I want to piss <laughs> some people off. Who you want to piss off? 
Like, when you start I'm when you start so calling funny. people colored, when you start talking oh. about people that slept their way to the top and you want to discredit this sister for her work, like I've been battling with our own people talking about she slept her way to the top. Yeah, I said, so she slept with 4.1 million people when they voted her in as an AG. I was like, that, she slept with the other yeah. 5 million people when she was going for a general election. So I was like, come on now. I was like, so we're going to talk, we're going to talk facts. Let's, let's, let's talk about the actual facts and let's like be ignorant behind it. Because here's the other thing. People want to say she slept her way to the top, but she's not been in cases where she's seen with men where we have other people who have facts where they've been with other people and they married. But they what about everybody? Pride. I mean, if that's the accusation, I mean, I can... Like, woman. Right. So I'm, I'm like, but I'm just, if I can I'm look just, at everybody I'm else and say that they're potentially something in their past that we're not going to necessarily agree with, they got some skeletons in their closet. Correct. But, but I'm just saying, if you go call it, be factual when you call it. Right. But just given, it up and run given with who, it. isn't this argument just ludicrous? Given who she's running against, he's got five That's kids, three baby mamas. I'm just saying, and he's cheated on every wife he had. Why they was like, pregnant? What? That's the most disrespect. That's almost like spitting in somebody's face. You sleeping what? with somebody while your wife is pregnant. Sir, like, why is this even? Why is this even part of the conversation? And so, right, uh, this that's this, why we need to stay focused on policy, right? Because uh, dreadlock Diva the says, vote, thing, the, dreadlock Diva yeah. says, vote for democracy. We are so blessed not to have experienced Jim Crow. Ooh, are man. we? Are we still not experiencing? I Jim think we Crow? still are experiencing Jim Crow. That's what I think. I, we I, are Jim Crow. I, well, okay, so not we are not experiencing. The like apartheid, Jim Crow. Uh, the apartheid the Jim Crow that was on the books and was law, yeah, is not what we have experienced. Yes, I mean, I got, I got a point she was making, but yeah, that's like he was right. And uh, black girls getting their shift together says, why would people say that about her? Has she been in any extramarital scandals? Not right. that I'm aware no. of. No, because even even the whole situation with Willie Brown. So they was like, oh, well, she was sitting with Willie Brown. He's mad. Well, actually, factually, actually, factually, young bars. Uh, that's not true at all. He had been divorced from his wife for 13 years. And so they had only dated for a year. They dated from 1994 to 1995 before he got voted in as the mayor of San Francisco. And even mm. at that time, she pulled away, like most of us do when it comes to trifling brothers. She, he did not want to commit to a relationship. So she was like, because you don't like, want to commit to no relationship, I'm not going to stay with you. And she broke up with him. You hear my boy say them trifling brothers. I love it. He's just like I call it like it is, man. I don't call it like it is. As she should. You ain't, you know, you ain't trying to be serious. Yeah. And she apparently was someone who had higher goals. Right. And if you're not trying to go where I'm trying to go, then I got to leave you. Exactly. Because she wasn't getting valued and respected as she should. As look she what she should. Mm -hmm. And look Hello. where she is. And look with where her she is. blended family, and they are so beautiful. So this is what I say to my sisters. Find love where you find love. Find love where you find love. I mean, Serena's do not, doing good. Yeah, do not let anybody confine you as to you got to marry this person, you got to date that person. Find, go where you are appreciated, go where you are loved, go where you are cherished. <laughs> and, and that's all I got to say about that. And he's saying, and, and Doug seems like he really cherish, cherishes her. Hicks, you got to come on with the sound effects. That was, that was nice. <laughs> I mean, and I say the same thing too. Now, I, I will be one of those people that say I advocate for, you know, black on black love. I do advocate for it. But yes. still, at the end of the day, though, I want you to be happy. Don't just leave yeah. yourself. If you can't find where, just find, if somebody's treating you well, don't hold out hoping for somebody else. There you, there you go. Listen, I'm an advocate for, I'm an advocate for black love. Y'all know, y'all, y'all both know Mr. Green. Yes. I love, love me. I love, love me from, I love me some Jimmy Green, James Green. Is this what I'm doing but no. if <laughs> you have to find love where you find love, yeah, absolutely. So I, I have, I hold nothing against this woman because she found love, and she found love later. Well, and and, and, and so that's the thing too. Like in our community, they're trying to discredit her because she's married to a white man. And I'm like, what is that even? I mean, because if I look at somebody, one of the biggest ones in our community, like Professor Griff, that was with Public Enemy. Mm -hmm. He's not married to a chocolate sister. And I mean, he really beats down the block about black issues and trying to make sure that everything is uh, up in hunky door for us. But, and mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, he's still saying white, but I mean, he's still, he ain't married to a, a, a sister sister. So okay. I'm like, so, you know, still, I'm like, and I know, because my wife says it too, 
She was like, you know, you be an advocate out in the street, but it's always different in the bedroom. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm just like, and then still my thing is, I don't think it discredits you because at the end of the day, no matter who I'm sleeping with in my house or who I'm laying next to, when I walk outside of that door, I am still brown. Still black. And they still going to perceive me as being a threat. That's right. Facts. Keep that, that part, that part. And so... I think it's important too because we know that all skin folk ain't all kin folk ain't skin folk. Oh. All skin folk ain't kin folk. So mm. if it's about if you're somebody who advocates for what's in our collective best interest, we're good. Mm-hmm. We're good. Yeah. But if you get in front of folks who don't look like us and you talk about us as if you're not us, that's what I have right. a problem with. You. Right. I truly have a problem when you're not culturally competent or culturally humble because all of our experiences, just because we may be in this skin, this beautiful melanin that's in a huge array, everybody doesn't have the experiences that make them want to be, right? Right. So I give grace, but once I realize you, you are... What we have on the psychiatrist that was on our show the other time, people are like imposters in their own skin. Yes. And so, like Sister Girl said, Jim Crow, in my opinion, that byproduct, sometimes, I can't even look at the screen too long with these glasses on, sometimes we are confused. I just had a conversation earlier because we, like my family's blended with people having biracial children. And mm-hmm. that's great. I love it. I'm, you know, we got a little bit of everything and I'm happy for it. It makes us better. But I do understand that there are people who just, oh, you mixed? Oh, what's wrong with you? You know why that is? Because we're in a society that if I'm lighter, if I could pass, then white is right. But if you that beautiful Hershey chocolate like my father, you know, you you ain't right. So when we look at our biracial children, you we black people, they get it from the black side, they get it from the non-black side the biracial child mm-hmm. or me being light skin, I get it from my sisters that's me- their melanated is darker than mine, you know, and that's why I love the love that me and Karen have. So it's real important that when we walk and navigate in this space, one, give grace to people that's a little bit, haven't experienced that. I literally have met people that said they haven't experienced racism. I can't speak to that. That's what they say in this day and age. That's, that's wonderful if you haven't, but a mm. lot of us, have and that's what I'm saying, Jim Crow. So when we have people in elected uh, positions and we know who some of those people are, mm-hmm. that's why all three of us stood up and ran the races that we ran because we knew that we we needed voices for people who are truly down to earth and really gonna do the work for the community, the people. And too many of us get in, we get in because we black, whatever. Everybody they they run that ticket. Vote for me because I'm black. Mm-hmm. And like you all, like you say, Hicks, get active. Like we say, Karen, know your people. Go look them up. Don't just cast the vote because somebody's black. Cast the vote because they right. Mm-hmm. They doing the right thing. You know, being black might <laughs> help. But I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> make sure you're doing the right thing. You know, I'm just kidding. But, you know, what are the issues? So that's going to drive me to my next question. What is the issue for you that will make you vote? What are some issues we need to not only for us on this panel, but some things that we need to give our listeners to think about? Why should you vote in this election? So, oh, ooh, I can I can fly off the top of my head. <laughs> so, <laughs> because listen, when I vote, I'm voting for people other than myself. Right. I'm voting for abortion rights mm-hmm. so that women and girls can have safe access. My uterus no longer is functioning. So (laughs) I'm voting so that I can have access to abortion. I'm voting so that we can get more other people on the Supreme Court who will rule in a way that what I believe is fair and just. I'm voting for LGBTQIA rights. I am not LGBTQIA plus or any of those but I'm voting for those people. Mm -hmm. I'm voting so that we can have safe schools, right? So that we can still have the Department of Education. They can create policy like I'm voting for climate change. I'm Mm -hmm. voting so that scientists 
can set policies for mm -hmm. environment for the environment, right? And not have appointed uh, appointed officials who know nothing about the science because I believe in the science. Those are the things that I'm voting for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, the environment will probably still be, you know, d pretty decent while for the rest of my, what, 30 probably years in this life? I don't know. I know. I'm just looking like, shoot, not the report I saw. But what I'm <laughs> saying is I'm voting. When I vote, I understand that this is, that my vote is bigger than just my house and my space. I'm voting for the collective. And I think that's what a lot of, and I'm a Democrat, and I think that's what a lot of Democrats do is that when we think about voting, we're thinking about how do we make this country a better place for everybody? How do we make sure that the most people that can be protected are protected? And so, and listen, like, like probably all three of us, I'm middle class. My husband and I make an income that, you know, we don't we don't get earned income credit. We don't get um, child tax credit. We don't get any of those things. I, you know, we didn't get a subsidy from the Affordable mm -hmm. Health Care Act, and we were both self-employed, paying about two thousand, more than two thousand dollars a month for health insurance, right, for a family of four. I could use the handout. So you know, I could use those, but I didn't get it. But I want to. I'm voting mm -hmm. so that my neighbor, that somebody else that I know can have that mm -hmm. affordable health care act. Mm -hmm. So my vote is not about me and my wallet. Yes, it would be great to have tax cuts. We always pay taxes. Every every mm -hmm. year since mm -hmm. I've been married, that we've been self-employed, We, my husband and I pay taxes. So I, I want the tax cuts. I want to pay less like, like the next person. But I understand that if I'm not paying taxes, right? If I'm paying less than taxes, that means something else is getting cut. You're cutting a food program, right? You're cutting some money mm -hmm. into education. You're not giving somebody um, Medicare or Medicaid, or you're trying to cut back on, you know, you're, you're trying to make people wait until they're 75 before they can retire and are eligible for Medicare. That's what my vote is about. But I, I'm, I'm off my thought soapbox. So tell us in the chat, what are some of the things you're passionate about that you want to see, um, that you, what, take, what mm -hmm. brings you to the ballot box? Hopefully it's human rights. Thanks. That's I mean, it's, it's all of what you said in the above is just human rights, the rights to healthcare, the rights to be able just to exist and live without having harassment from any living body regardless of who you with, who Facts. you love, and what you're doing, and no matter what religion you practice. Facts. Even Isn't me being it? a Christian, we don't need, I, I am one to say that we don't need the Ten Commandments posted in the, mm. in the classrooms and stuff. Mm. And I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know that. Just right. because you're trying to respect the fact that there are multiple religions in the world. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I mean, yeah, when I it mean. comes to people that haven't even experienced racism, I'm, I'm not, I mean, because I would think that, like my boys, I mean, my boys been sheltered. I don't, they don't think they've ever experienced anything racist, and I hope they never do. But they'll mm -hmm. know about it. I mean, that's the whole purpose of history. You have to know yeah. where you came from. And I hate the fact that and they're attacking. It, and, you, and you need to know what it looks like, though, right? Right. And because here's the thing, they may not have recognized that some that they've been that they've experienced some microaggression right. that they didn't even recognize as being racist. Right. Because they would think it's something else when actuality it was them, that person being racist towards them. Yeah. The, oh, you're so articulate. Mm hmm Ooh. Somebody said Kamala was smart. And I just she should be. I, will, I would like to hope so. <laughs> she should I mean, be. <laughs> if you call yourself being an attorney, I mean, I would like to think. Listen. She went to U she went to was it UCLA Hastings Law School? Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. took one of the hardest bar exams in the country. California is one of the hardest bar exams. She graduated from Howard with the degree in economics mm -hmm. and 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 poli sci, but economics in and of itself is not a slouchy mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. degree. You know what I'm saying? 
So and then her work with all women too. Like I think she's co-founder of the Emerge Group, I believe. Mm, I gotta look you that know. up. Yep. So I believe she has something to do with that whole organization, which empowers women to run. You mm. know. So I believe that's just another layer of someone advocating for women when you have other people trying to take us backwards. In yeah, I just think we, at the end of the day, we have to focus on policy and get away from all these identity politics and stuff and just look mm-hmm. at what people are doing and what changes they want. Because, I mean, they can't stand on any policy. That's why I'm, that's why people get mad at me. Because when I make videos, I'm, I'm attacking the Democratic Party. And they say, well, why aren't you talking about Republicans? I was like, because they don't stand on nothing. They don't stand on no business. Because I'm was, i like, why am I talking about somebody <laughs> don't do anything to help out anybody else except their own selfish needs? People just got money. Mm. So I'm like, I don't spend time on stuff that, that has no relevance to me in my life. I want to make sure the people that are supposed to be advocating for us are doing their job like they're supposed to. But I thought some, I thought the... Uh, the uh, previous president did the most for black people in the history of uh somebody said that and i said give me a policy that actually contributed towards that because i was like you just can't say you're doing something for somebody else and you have a policy backing it up like what what did you you say it right (laughs) wait you're supposed to say it and click your heels three times and it's gonna be true yeah no we ain't (laughs) doing no two snaps around a circle and snap back we're not that's not no yeah Um, no no, just because you say it doesn't mean that it's true Right. Mm. And then the, and that's the other thing too. I, I get agitated when I talk to, to people about when it comes to political stuff. I said, because you know mm. what you do in your first term as a president, you won't ever see it until the second or third term or whoever's right. in office after that. So that's I was true. like, so he's riding the coattail of what president Obama did. He didn't do mm-hmm. anything. Only thing that he did was cause chaos. He did do something that was immediate. He ignored the COVID crisis and caused chaos across his country and his world. Oh, no, he told you to tra- drink bleach. That was supposed to make it better, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. and stick some light and stuff in your blood. and Yeah. 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 But he's smart. So, he's smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As my, nie- as my great niece would say, he might be medium smart. Anyway, I don't even think he's, he's medium <laughs> smart. <laughs> she said medium <laughs> smart. <laughs> She said that about somebody we know. She said he's medium smart. I don't understand how you support somebody that sit here and raves and say he loves the uneducated. Because when you sit there and cheer, now you're cheering on the fact that he's calling you stupid. But, I mean, there's so much that he has said that I've been like, is this real? Because I, I, I really feel like I'm being punked whenever he speaks. Mm-hmm. Like, I right, when he's saying, talking about that's my those are my well, black people over there, and I'm like, what do you mean yeah. he's not racist? Or you got all these illegals said, coming across his border it. taking uh black jobs, and I was like, well, what what black job they taking? Because I'm like, maybe I need to go try to lock some of them so I can get the job back. Because I'm like, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> and moreover, now he's more relatable because he has a felony with to black people, but that's so disgusting. Child, <sighs> um, I will say. This is the thing that frightens me. Mm, I shouldn't say frighten me, that I pray for. Okay. For his recovery. For a person to say to you, drink bleach, or these comments that we've all made, the body of people who believe in that, that's the true issue. The fact that you have a person that's saying all this stuff, you know, we've had throughout history, people to say stuff. It's the people that follow them and are willing to shed blood because of that. And think about it. What, just, just, just think about the rationale. What human being will respect a person's, what you say, medium, medium smart? Nah, medium smart. tell you to drink bleach. Well, I do appreciate him for that. I mean, because no. he that derobed a whole bunch of people. He what? He derobed a bunch of people. So I'm like, so I'm glad he showed up and showed out because now I don't have to guess who's behind the hood. I can see who's behind the hood. Okay. Facts. So it's like, Facts. it's at the end of the day, I mean, because when, when, when all this stuff was abolished to help out, supposedly help out the black community, everything started taking place behind the scenes. So now I'm having to walk around and guess what your actions are, what you're doing, and is it actually racist or are you just being just an ignorant person? But now when yeah, you come out to the home. forefront, at least I can identify who my enemy is and I know yeah. where to stay away from. Yep. Took the off. Mm-hmm. As they say in church, govern yourself accordingly. Right. 
facts. I don't even have to use discernment because I mean, God has showed them right in my face. So I'm not even trying to have. Yep. I don't need no discernment. I don't need no spiritual gifts. I mean, I can see the yep. enemy for who they are. Yep. Like, mm-hmm. thank you for letting me know that about you. Mm-hmm. So here we are. Everybody, it, go ahead, Kat. Everybody that's listening, go ahead and chime in. What are you looking for in this election? What are some policies that you like to see um, discussed? And what aligns with you? What are you looking for in a presidential candidate? And if you are of the black community and you mm-hmm. say that no, no, nobody is doing anything for the black community, give me something that you want to see in the black community that will specifically help us out. Because mm. time and time again, I hear people say that they haven't done anything for us. What do you want them to do for us? Give me something that makes economic sense that will actually get passed and presented on a House floor, get voted on, passed to the Senate, and then sent to the president's office to have him sign off on it. Or in your local governments, go and have the governor sign yeah. off on it. Tell me something. Right. Yes. Right. And, 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 and as, as much as I know, our, some of our folks are passionate about the reparations movement. That's not going anywhere. I disagree with That's that. Not, you disagree with that? Mm-hmm. That's not going anywhere. We've had, no, they've had some trial studies. I mean, they're getting ready to do it in California and a couple of cities. They've actually done it in, well, they did California UBI. California is California. But I'm saying, though, so everything can be done in trial studies, right? The right. same thing with legalization of, of marijuana. It was done in Utah first, and then they start spreading to other places, and now it's taking place across this whole country. So if they can see how we can actually make sense, and it actually goes to actually descendants, like descendants of, it ain't going all black mm-hmm. people, descendants of slaves, yeah, I mean, it, it can make sense. I mean, I don't care what the rep- reparations come in the format. Like, well, well, yeah, I'll take the two acres. I don't want no two acres anymore. I want more than that. But still, I mean, it, it can happen. I'm, I'm not going to say it's not going to happen anymore because I've seen other places pushing it out and they're doing a dry run of it. So as long as it can make sense where they're doing it at, then we all can advocate. I mean, because isn't it what we say when we, when we push in to put people in office? We want somebody in there that we can try to push and advocate stuff towards and they will actually go run with it. So, I mean, I think that's one of those things that we can, as long as it makes sense. Because if we got enough money to give to other countries, and we can give... For reparations. It, it, even outside of them, we can find out that we made a mistake giving $6.3 billion yeah. to another country to, for a war that they're fighting. Then mm-hmm. we can somehow find a way to pay back the stuff that was done and caused and harm that was caused to the black community. And, and, and here's why I don't disagree with you about... I, I think that the idea of reparations is just like, you know, we had generations and generations that toiled. They came out of slavery with literally nothing, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, and, and never. And so there's never been an equal playing field for black folks in this country. Um, Well, you can speed up past slavery. You don't even have to go back that far. You can look at people that came out of the Civil War and they, they had land taken or in World War II when they came back from fight from this country and I mean, they went back to like, the land and the land was stolen it, from them. So my, what, what, the point that I was going to make is mm-hmm. I, I think that it is noble. I think it is worthy. I think it is just. I just don't think that in our lifetime it's going to get passed on a national on a national level. Maybe some states or local communities may do it. I just, and I would love to be proven wrong. National, no. I would agree with you on national. State level, I, like, I can I can see yeah. state, not national. I just, I, that, and, but that's usually where it's brought up at. It's usually brought up at a national level. Um, and people were, and because I've seen people who said that they were disappointed in Barack, that Barack didn't bring up reparations when he was president. Well, he couldn't get anything, hardly anything passed because no. you had everybody working against him because he was black. Oh, they deter- they said right after he won, he's going to be a one-term president. We're going to do everything in our power to make sure he was a one-term All president. All day for who it is. Mitch McConnell himself, Turtle Man himself said that. And so I'm sure this is going to be the same mentality that, um, that Madam um, President is going to face when she is inaugurated on January 12th. Uh, 20th, 2025. No, I disagree with that. I don't, I don't think so. Y'all yeah. have, no, because the, you don't think they're going to do her the same way? No, no. Women's movement has actually made a huge difference within this country. I mean, look how many women CEOs that we have right now. Look how many women presidents we have of college institutions right now. 
the when it comes to power in the women's movement, it has truly made it. I mean, look how many women are in in, in Congress and in the Senate right now. Well, okay, so wait, I'm here. But we've got to give we've got to give her a Senate, and we've got to give her we've got to we've got to increase the numbers in the Senate to make right. it uh to make it um to make a make it so that the bill can you know not be uh, defeated, and we've got to give we got to get back a majority in in the House. Right now, we've lost the House. Right. So this election cycle, we've got to get her the House and a majority, uh, more than just fifty plus the one, in the in the Senate. So she she needs to get to that sixty in right. the Senate to make sure number one that when her Supreme Court justices, when she's trying to nominate folks, that they can't block her. And then when we're trying to get bills done, we need that House and we need the Senate. That's my. Well, and that's and that's another thing that I was pushing for too. I'm like, you're so focused on the presidential, the the, the presidency. I'm like, why you should be focusing on Congress and the Senate? Because I'm like, at the end of the day, even if 45, because had Biden been in, 45 would have won. But if even yeah. if 45 had won, we would have made sure that we had the House and we had the Senate. So, because I'm like, you sitting down. I understand the frustration that you have because I had the same frustration. I have the same frustration too, mm-hmm. but I'm not shooting myself in the foot. Like I'm not stupid. Like I mean, I'm used. To, I'm still going to show up and make sure that we can take back the house and we can still right. control the Senate. Because if you don't do that, then you really are giving them the power to do anything and everything they yeah. want. Especially now that the president has the power to be a king. Mm. Let's not forget that past, right? That's that's a show in and of itself. So what that means, for those of you who are listening or watching, that means you need to get involved. I ain't telling you how to vote, but I'm telling you that you need to get involved. Because if you care about democracy, then you have to get involved to make sure that the folks that you want to represent you on the local, the state, and the federal level that they're representing your best interest. And how do you do that? You donate to their campaigns. You knock doors. You make phone calls. You put signs out. You go to work. You, you go, go vote. To, you go vote. That, you that was, people yeah. with you. And you drive people around. You find out who needs a ride. And you get with organizations and find your time, your talent, and your treasures. And you get out there and be active and get involved. And don't stop. Right, and when you say you donate, know, donate is not just money. Donate is your time. Donate your time is a time. your time is a currency. Your like, like Kat just saying, your skill sets that that is a currency. So whatever you can do, I don't care if you're making a social media post. I, I mean, the, yeah. the easiest thing you can do is get out and knocking your neighbor's doors. I mean, mm-hmm. you can canvas your neighbor. If you're going out for a walk, just knock on. As you see your neighbors, give them a flyer. Yep, yep. Cool. And you have everybody in your telephone. If you have one person in your phone, call them. Mm-hmm. And find out are you registered to vote? This is where you need to go. My voter page dot SOS dot whatever state you're in dot gov. Right. Go out, find out. And stop and being then. keyboard warriors. Because that's another one thing, the other thing that really agitates me too, where we, we sit online and we argue with keyboard. one another, but we're not doing anything to push. You're not them. moving the needle. Right. You're not keyboard. doing anything at all except keeping up fuss online. I'm like, yes. you can't even give okay. Even if you have something that you're interested in, you can find out who your community leader is. You can find yeah. out who the president is of your local party, and you can try to talk to them. I mean, just volunteer your time to even just do just that. If you have an idea of something that can take place within your own neighborhood, that they can pitch up, pitch up you know, to the, uh, the elected officials. And don't, we're not beating up anybody. Oh, I am. Just take, take, take charge. You know, I my little feelings was hurt last year, so I don't want to be re-traumatized. But... Yeah. Just, just please get involved because, hey, is that me doing that? That is. <laughs> How did I do that? So get involved, please, 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 because those of us that are running and have ran, we really, we, we break the bank. We make personal investments. Our time, our personal time is no longer ours. We literally, from sun up to sun down, there are good candidates like us on this screen that we were humping day in and day out. Our time, our talent, and our treasures. And we gave all of that because we believe in a greater power than ourselves. Mm -hmm. And instead of me voting for somebody, instead of me looking at a ballot and there's no one on the ballot that I really feel 
aligns with what I need for me and my community, then I'm going to run. So if you don't want to vote for the person on the ballot, don't complain. Get involved and learn how you can run. Stop thinking that the rich are the only ones who can run because that's not the case. Now, it has been designed. It's difficult to hire up you go because that's a lot of money to raise. But you can start at the local level. Mm -hmm. Get on a board. Plug in and find out how you can get involved with your school. If you are alive, you playing taxes. Start figuring out how your taxes, where your tax dollar go. Because if you don't care, we all got podcasts and we would love to take your donations <laughs> with conversations with Karen and Karen. <laughs> you know, but get involved because I feel like democracy is on the ballot. I feel like, mm -hmm. like I said earlier, you have one person who has made statements that has negatively riled up people to be violent. Mm -hmm. Now, it's, and so to me, those people already have a sense of hate in their heart, and that was just a spark that they needed, period. Because you can't tell me something hateful, and then I'm going to react hatefully because I don't. that's not who I am. I'm just going to push you away from me and pray over you. But if you have that in you already, you just need somebody to give you a reason because you want to put that hood back on or whatever your hate is for you. That's no. Fight those people with a pen, with the power of the pen. Put your name on the ballot and let's get things done so we can make laws, so we can get gun safety. Being Asian and black and Hispanic and walking the streets and not have somebody target us because of our race or our religion or who you love like this is crazy and so i'm on my soapbox i'm sorry but we we go to bat this isn't fake and phony for us we literally are out here trying to fight for it because when you have people telling you that you're not good enough you black you a female you don't look like us you wear your hair like this and all this so sit down or what is it when they say um um you to up you you know stay in your place that type mm -hmm. i mean this is what is going on people this is what's going on and we have to stand up to this don't just talk about it don't have internet courage be Take about it be about it just be so, about it diva of coupon says she is voting for the future i feel you sis yes. i Bad. feel you voting that's for the perfect. future and that's exactly why i vote i vote for the future mm -hmm. and you know and i hope that this campaign and normally you know this is a different show for me and cat normally we don't endorse any we'll candidate say we don't say anything this like this election cycle like we haven't and we did we haven't had any candidates on um and so this was so like i feel like this last week was just so incredible incredible mm -hmm. um, yeah. the, the energy that i was feeling she's gonna win and, huh no she's gonna win and i feel that she's gonna win. I, feel, I feel it i feel that I so that that my sister and i have already gotten our our accommodations and our plane tickets for january yeah she's gonna win because i want to see her get sworn in like i want to be in the number in the face that's right yeah. that's right i want to be in the number diva of coupon says a future where my grandkids won't have the anxiety brought on by race i don't I want my wrong. grandkids to grow old with their heads on a swivel Ooh, they deserve peace that's right they that's deserve right. peace i love that facts i that's absolutely good. love that Yes. Because there is a level of anxiety that our generation mm -hmm. has grown up with that mm -hmm. we're always cognizant of our blackness. Mm -hmm. We have not had the luxury to just be, be. in mm. this world. We have not. Mm. Thank you for that, Diva of Coupons, because that is so true. We just, we just haven't had that luxury. And, and so... I want the same thing for my grandkids as well, for my kids to just be in this world and their skin not be um not be a weapon. A barrier. A mm. barrier, yes. Mm. And yes. weaponized. Yep. And people, mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Girl, Thank it's a you. testimony. Yeah, yeah. And so the topic of this show was navigating the narrative, Kamala Harris in 2024. And so, and we've covered like a lot of different things, but I'm telling you, I'm praying for this sister. I yeah, am. If you were one of those people that was telling people to show up for Biden and because of either you voting for what's right or you voting for what's wrong, which is 45, then the attitude should be the same thing for Kamala. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Fact. Perfect. I and we're going to end on that because <laughs> yeah. that was perfect. <laughs> Look, that was wait, wait, perfect. wait. Go ahead. Wait. Hicks, what's your final word? What's the last positive thing you want to say to our listeners? Um, one thing I always say, be an advocate for truth. I mean, we are, like I said, we always, we all make mistakes. We always going to find some issues that we're not going to get right. But always mm. come back, correct yourself, because at the end of the day, everybody can be forgiven. We, we, all of us fall short sometimes. Just be one and stand up and be truthful about where you fell short at and then ask for forgiveness and correct yourself. Also, also too, get out and be active. Stop sitting at home. and Because, I mean, I get it. I mean, heck, some, I want to be comfortable sometimes, too. But, again, you don't have to. Your time don't always take two hours, three hours. It could be one hour. It could be sitting on the yeah. phone texting somebody. Just whatever your talents are, just get out and try to postcards. do that. They could do postcards. Right. They, right. They, yes. You sure? They so, could do postcards. You don't have to. If, you, if you're not somebody who's comfortable knocking doors, if you don't want to do that, you can do postcards. There's so many things that right. you can do in this campaign that may seem small, but it is consequential. Well, I'm not even talking about any campaign at all. I'm just talking mm-hmm. about in all in all policies, local policies uh, and in federal stuff. Just get oh, out no, and I'm... be involved in the community. If you know about things that are taking place in the community, mm-hmm. just be an advocate for stuff to, to drive and get knowledge out there because all of us not going to be to reach everybody. It takes a whole village to be able to keep everybody informed and keep them knowledgeable on things that's against just drive and change within the community. I don't care if it's from real estate prices going up that we, we have to get in there and get uh, our, our taxes and stuff grandfathered in. I mean, mm-hmm. just be the voice for, for knowledge and be the voice for change. Amen. Amen. What's your website last time? You can find me at ptgtv.online. It's politics, technology, and gaming. TV.online. That's where all my stuff is at. I break down things in a way for people to understand. Hopefully have some humor behind it. If y'all want to uh, come on and check me out sometimes while I'm gaming, where I do talk about policies and politics at times when I'm gaming, you can find me on twitch.tv forward slash escaping the matrix without the E, because I believe that we are all stuck in the matrix right now, right now, and we have to do everything we can to be acknowledged, to be informed yeah. and be engaged so we can escape the realities of now and we can bring our people to the future. Love, 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 love. And uh, Dreadlock Diva said she loves your glasses. I was about to say, thank you, Dreadlock Diva, girl. <laughs> I love you. Thank you. I think it was, what we say we get them from? Something. These, Zula, are yours? I Z- can't think Zula? the name of it. I think are Zula, you? but we are putting it into okay. where I get them from, girl. But um, thank you, Hicks. As always, it's always great to have you on yes. our love. Thank you for dropping knowledge. I knew hey, this I conversation. I appreciate I, I knew this conversation was gonna be good. When I saw your post, I was like, "Ooh, yeah, we got to talk about this." <laughs> oh, tell everybody about your book. Oh yeah, if y'all oh, yeah. interested in getting a podcast going or. You want to get in some form of content creation because you can still follow the same selves. I have published a book. It's called The Ultimate Technical Guide to Creating a Podcast. You can find it on my website, pgtv.online, and it is The Ultimate Technical Guide to Creating a Podcast. And if you purchase the book directly from my website, you can set up a one-on-one consultation with me with any of those things that you that need help with within that book, and we can allocate an hour to an hour and a half. For I can personally walk you through the things that I have done and I've even helped Cat out with sometimes because <laughs> I got to help my sister out, both of them, <laughs> if they have some questions. Yeah. Uh, so schedule with me. It's free. Once you, if you buy the book from there from my website, it's free of charge. And, you know, I try to get you straight. As much technical yeah. advice as you've given us, we need to buy your book. <laughs> Just, oh, it's, yeah, I got it, girl. Y'all family. So, I mean, it's, it's all yeah. Cat, 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 yeah, Cat did, but, I mean, it's y'all family. I mean, it's all good. Yeah. I do myself Absolutely. out of love. Okay, uh, Check out yeah, our whole episode with Antonio so you can find out how long he's been doing his IT stuff, man. He's been doing it for decades. Yeah. So. 20 yeah. plus years. 20 plus years. I'm old. Literally, literally. Yeah. All right, family. <laughs> We this was such a great conversation. Thank you. And we're gonna continue it because I, I cause 
as this campaign unfolds, I know that there's going to be some craziness. I know it. I can feel it. Oh, yeah. Y'all follow me on my because I'm going to be talking yeah. about it. So, uh, you know, when... I don't want to receive that. No. Receive what? Did you say craziness? What you mean? Oh, it's going to be smoke. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna, I'm ready for it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, yes. They're going to pull yeah. some shenanigans. Oh, yeah. I mean, because they don't have anything on, which is why they're saying she slept her way to the top when she did the exactly. candidate. So it's like, now I got to make some stuff up. Or oh, which is why they're trying to get Montel Williams involved with it. He said, leave my name out of it because why exactly. you not, you're not worried about nobody else's relationship. So yeah, they, they coming for I welcome it, and I'm, I hope you all do too because it's free content creation so I can talk about these crazy people. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, we own it. I just, you know, it just, it pulls me back to what I said, the people that follow it. Like, come on, people, we really have to wake up. Hey, Baby said, Auntie can't hey. <laughs> you know, I just, 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 people who follow it is the thing that kill me. That's all I'm saying. Not kill me. Just, love listen, me. there's follow always going to be people, who, there's always going to be people who follow foolishness. Yeah. Um, but there's, so I, I am prepared that there mm-hmm. is going to be some things that there, there's going to be some tricks. There's going to be some things that they're going to try. Gotcha. So I am, I am girding myself up for that you praying see? for the best and prepared for the yeah, yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. I know we're wrapping up but now nah, it's they, the problem they have with her almost similar to the same thing they have with, with president obama is well now actually they don't have anything on her because with him he was a first term senator so they was arguing he wasn't from this country but i'm like no yeah. she was an ag for some years before she even became a senator and she served in two seats prior to that before becoming an AG. Mm-hmm. So only thing you can truly have to fight her on is her policy. But right. a lot of the policies she had, it actually helped out and affected the black community. Now, of course, if you was on the back end of that, you might feel some kind of way about it, but she did good just as well as some people might say she did bad. So only thing you got to do is she just got to stand on business on her side and they don't try to make up lies on, on, on her, on their side. And at the end of the day, I welcome because the only thing you can do is talk about her blackness, call her colors, and just say, ah. and then treat her like you want to treat every other woman, like it's a handmaid's tale that they just slept them way up to the top and they're not worth mm. anything. Mm. So Chastity <laughs> says she feels the shift in the atmosphere. It's I feel it. moving. It's shaking. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode with our conversation with Karen and Kat. We had a pleasure talking about Kamala Harris and some of the things I think she's uh, going to do as she wins and some of the lies are being told by the, the Republican Party and just people that just don't necessarily want to rock with her since Biden stepped out. And of course, me pointing out the fact that even the alternatives are in the same age bracket that I feel as though they're too old to be uh, running for office. But thank you all for tuning in. Make sure y'all get out, get active, be active in the community, get out, do some, I don't care who your candidate is, get out and do some canvas work to make sure people are aware of the issues, aware of policies. And the whole goal is really just not to put 45 in office. And I understand how people may feel about, you know, putting other people in, they don't stand a chance. We're trying to vote for other people that don't stand a chance. But at the end of the day, the goal should be not allowing uh, 45 and his minions to get into office. So y'all get out, be active, love you all, be safe, a peace.